Hello there, once again, my FileMaker friends, fans, and fellow developers. Um, very important video with regards to the themes thing. Some uh, definitely some useful tips as a result of the video that I posted and sending out the email. Thank you so much, so, so much to Robert uh, Kaiser. He pointed to a post on the FileMaker Technical Network if you're not already on that. And here's the URL. I'll bring that up. That is at uh, fmdev.filemaker.com slash message slash 7821. And one of my colleagues, Robert, uh, not Robert, sorry about that, um, Richard Carlton, had created videos. He's been, he had been working with um, FileMaker before. I don't know if he posted this tip or whatever. Either way, Robert is the one that actually sent the tip to me, which is really, really cool. So in the video, I showed you that basically what I was doing is I was simply incrementing the ID from like 2 to 3 to 4 to get it to update. Turns out you don't have to do that. This is absolutely awesome. You can force a refresh or a refresh or force flush the uh, loaded theme within the... Um, solution actually and let me close this sublime window right now because there's another thing that you need to know first before you sh before I show you that tip so right now I have the wave theme loaded so over here in my finder we're in that same location that uh, themes resources contents whatever this is not where you want to actually put things it turns out that there is another folder uh, where you can put things so what I did is you can go down here and you can copy any of the themes that you want to use as a starting point if you want to unless you're starting with your own base theme as I mentioned in the second video but we can for example we can select and copy a uh, wave I'm using total finder so it does allow me to copy or I could just simply drag copy now the folder that you want to go to is a themes folder within the extensions directory so as we take a look at this folder you can see that I'm on my hard drive my user folder my user library application support filemaker extensions themes so if you want to be able to go to this quickly and you're on the Macintosh then this is what you're going to do you're simply going to go um, and I've got the little this little command key tool down here in the corner which is going to show you what I'm holding down in terms of modifier keys and the key that I'm using so I'm going to go command shift G and there's the path that you're going to want to put in it's at uh, tilde which is your uh, user folder library application support FileMaker extensions. Go to that folder and it basically will be all of your plugins but with FileMaker 5 or excuse me FileMaker 12 having been installed there is this folder of themes that will have been created so obviously this is probably in anticipation of a distribution of themes on behalf of FileMaker. That would be my guess. Don't quote me. I don't know for sure. And of course FileMaker is going to deny anything about whether or not that's the case. Either way it works. Um, you can simply put your folder here. You can see that I've already put a copy of the wave. I did put, um, I did rename the folder to wave2 and then I did rename the manifest. Now uh, Robert sent his email in and he's from Germany so obviously if you're going to change anything in the manifest and the CSS you're going to also need to change anything that is a locale specific uh, change within that locale specific XML file for the manifest for example he's DE for Germany so of course you're going to need to change that group as well as the group and any other ID value in the manifest corresponding to the uh, localized version of uh, FileMaker that you're working on so let's send this to sublime let's get a sublime window up and we will switch back over there and then just drag that and open it up so you can see our wave we'll open up the wave.css we'll open up a second pane and in that pane we'll open up the manifest and of course if we were working with the manifest uh, DE we've got the shortened version here it's going to use it looks like it uses inheritance I haven't actually taken the time to look at the localized version but here is the group name that would simply need to correspond with the group name that you put here so custom would simply just need to be the same over here in custom for the other um, languages in order for them to be localized localized as well and of course you can put a localized uh, name but I've already done the change I've got wave 2 I've got wave 2 but here is the awesome reloading re 
caching, whatever. It's simply a sequence of keys that you need to hold down when you modify this theme. So now that I've got this theme over in my themes folder in my FileMaker extensions folder, it won't be wiped out on a reinstall of FileMaker. Very cool. This is so awesome, this stuff. All I have to do now is simply go to this theme and if I had made a change to the theme, for example, let's go over here and under images I will now modify and I will open with Acorn and get rid of this older one. Here is the, the, the wave that I want to modify and I'll simply put in my name Matt and then I will save this. So with that saved and I did make the change I don't have to go in and change the ID now the theme on this layout was already set to you can see wave 2 um, if I click OK, you can see that it doesn't get my change that I made to my image. But here is the trick. Dun, 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 dun. If you hold down and look down here at the bottom of the sequences of what I'm holding, it is Command, Option, Shift, and Control. And when I click OK, that's going to force the refresh of the loading of all of the CSS from the theme folder, or in this case from the extensions themes folder, and pull it back into the file. Now what's better about this is it's going to reload any images that were the same name rather than stacking them into the file, which will grow the file if you used my former um, XML method or excuse me, changing the ID method. So those are two critical things. One minor thing, which is basically for localization, if you're going to localize and change, um, support localized versions. And there's one other thing that I noticed this in my video when I had uh, applied the theme and then backed out of it, but this is something that again Robert mentioned. So you notice that in here, if I go and change the theme to let's say blue, well, actually, it's it's better if we start with um, something like the assets or something uh, where we want to have a different theme, but we want it to have a different color. So here in the assets, um, and actually, let's go in and because I had jacked up this uh, CSS, let's do our reapply technique and force reapply that. Uh, no, it still uh, kept that change. Huh. Well, here's the uh, the trick that I was going to show you is um, if you switch to, say, for example, um, let's go up to a color here, blue, and we say OK, and if we do an undo, and then we do another undo, um, I think we saw it. We saw it with the other um, theme of what had happened. Um, I believe it was on. How do I replicate this? Let's go desktop asset details. It was on this theme where I had switched and remember I was mentioning about the the tweaking that you've done to the theme gets wiped out when you apply the new theme. So let's try that. Let's apply uh, bamboo and that completely wipes out all of the tweaks that were applied. If we undo, there we go, we get to keep this theme but we go back to the tweaks that we had on individual objects. So now in browse mode what happens is the first undo, we simply took off the reformatting to the objects, and then the second undo would go back to the original theme, which is actually pretty cool in terms of being able to use a different theme but retain the tweaks that were applied to a theme. Uh, so that's really cool to know. So we've got two majors and one minor, and the one little thing about the... Um, well, the majors are the keys, the location of the file in FileMaker's extension folder, and then also the minor was uh, this undo, and then the second minor is, there you go, changing the group name or changing the, the localized versions of the manifest. So that's the quick little update. Thank you so much, Robert. That's so awesome. And everybody who is following the thread and discussing things on the uh, thread talking about theming and to Richard Carlton and for what he's contributing and everybody else. I hope these videos help everybody else. They have helped me. That's absolutely awesome. And I'm just uh, so thrilled to be able to work with all of this cool stuff. All right. Until next time, happy file making. Thanks a lot.